everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter. Today we're going to be having a look at a Hornby model as you can see. No prizes for getting that because you all know it's made by Hornby. And what we're looking at today is something a bit special. Well to me it is anyway. I'm sure you're thinking well what's so special about this model in particular. Well there's a good reason for that. The model I'm reviewing today is the Duke of Gloucester, a model that's been out for some years now. It was released in 2013, if I remember rightly. Now this model came out during a time when Hornby had manufacturing problems, when they weren't releasing as much products as they do now basically. So the products have been delayed, this was one of them, and during the year that this was supposed to have come out, I was actually going to get this model straight away. This is the special edition model, there's other versions of this model, there's the railroad range version, there's a version of this that has TTS sound, you can also get it in the train pack and I think you can also get it that has a different tender as well, on its own, it's a separate model I think, I'm pretty sure you can, because um, I think it was supposed to have come out at the end of 2012 I think actually but then it was going to come out early 2013 and I had this model pre-ordered but when it was delayed and didn't come out at the beginning of 2013 I cancelled the pre-order because I thought as soon as it comes out I can get it then that wasn't to be because as soon as it came out they sold out like hotcakes and I just couldn't get one then and so I didn't get one until now. I mean, I very nearly bought one of these as a second hand model from Wally last year, but there were other things that I had planned to get, so I didn't get it. But it was actually just after I had filmed and exported the review of the Brighton Bell, which you saw in the last review video that I did, that I was browsing eBay for bargains, as you do. And I was looking at the models of Duke of Gloucester that looked for sale on eBay. It was mostly either the railroad range models or a couple with TTS sound and a few at the train packs. But then I found this one. The special edition model, as I buy it now, brand new, for £118. Or technically counting the postage, 127 quid, Because it was special delivery. Next day delivery. But either way, so... I knew that this was my perfect chance to get one of these models and so I grabbed it, I just had to do it because I've always wanted a model of Duke of Gloucester I've always loved the Duke of Gloucester it has quite an interesting and significant history behind it all it's the only one of its kind that was ever built and it was built to replace 46202 Princess Anne that was destroyed in the Harrow and Wellstone rail crash it was considered a failure in BR service due to its high coal consumption and the fact that it was a poor steamer and it only lasted for 8 years in service with BR being withdrawn in 1962 then being sent to Die Woodhams, also known as Barry Scrapyard or even Wooden Brothers, whatever you choose to call it and it laid there till 1974 when it was preserved and during its restoration it was discovered that the chimney and the dampers had been built too small to how they should have been. So those were rectified during the restoration and it cured its <laughs> poor steaming problems. And it's currently now out of service for overhaul. I have seen it a couple of times myself, which you can find videos of on my YouTube channel. But anyway, enough with the talking, let's get this model open. So first of all we just simply slide off the sleeve of the box, I mean just look at that, that just looks absolutely beautiful and stunning that does. So this is the box sleeve, it says in the box that we get two etched name plates, we don't get etched name plates and I'll show you why in a while. So this is the box sleeve with a picture of the model that you get on the front. Then on the back you get a photo of the real locomotive and some brief history of it. So 
So you can pause and read that if you want. I'm not going to stop you. So put the box sleeve to one side. And then we'll remove the plastic tray. Oh. That nearly slid out then with the sleeve. So I'll pop that to one side and remove the instructions. Which says standard class A because this was classified as the BR standard class A's. And there were supposed to be more of these, but Duke of Gloss was the only one that was built and considered the prototype locomotive. But anyway, so... Coming back to the instructions, it tells you how to lubricate the model, fit in the details, the assembly of the loco and the tender, close coupling, DCC sound, if you wish to fit it, and the body removal. And on the back it tells you how to fit the brake rods. So put that to one side. Then we just remove the outer sleeve. And we have a couple of bags of details in here, which we'll look at now. So in the first accessory bag we get the brake rods. One is to fit under the tender and the other to fit under the loco. A couple of drain cocks. Cab doors. Vacuum pipes and a brake pipe, a slim tension lock coupling, as well as a coupling hook as well. We get the footsteps and this little bit of detail, which is to cover up the NEM socket if you wish to not double head it or not put a coupling on the front of the loco. Now we come on to the accessory bag, which has the name plates in. Before I come on to the name plates, there is just something I want to talk about. There's a label on the bag that says Attach headboard using blue tack, not suitable for children. You don't get a headboard in the bag, you get the name plates to fit on the smoke deflectors of the locomotive. Because what we did with some of their train packs, they did include headboards with them. A couple of examples the Talisman and the Kunada, both those train packs I have. There's other train packs they did that came with headboards as well. So what they've done here is they have reused the bags that they use for some of the train packs that were supplied with headboards that they use for the name plates. I'm not entirely sure why but that's what they've done. Now we come on to the name plates. Now as I showed you earlier at the beginning of the video while I was unboxing the model it said on the box sleeve that this model comes with H name plates, and this is also the case for the special edition Cock of the North, the P2, which I have reviewed before in the past. It also said in that the box sleeve for that model that it also came with H name plates, and in that review of Cock of the North, I did, I actually thought the name plates were indeed H name plates and actually called them H name plates. However, they are not etched, they are just simply decals printed onto pieces of plastic. Now it is quite misleading that they put on the box sleeve that this model comes with its name plates, only to then find that the name plates are just simply have been printed onto pieces of plastic. So they're not etched. However what we have to remember is that, that this model did come out at a time when Hornby did have some manufacturing problems. So what's not to say that maybe that the Duke of Gloucester and Cock of the North were both supposed to have had etched name plates, but because of the manufacturing problems they had, maybe they couldn't simply make the etched name plates, and they just simply supplied these name plates by printing decals onto these pieces of plastic. So that's something not to be ruled out, because that could have happened. It might not be the case, but if it is the case, then it is understandable, because they did have manufacturing problems. So maybe that's what could have happened. Maybe that explains what it says on the box, that the nameplates are etched, but the nameplates themselves are not. 
So the detailed parts now looked at, we now move on to the model. So just undo the box flap. Remove this plastic sheet. And now we just simply lift the model out of this tray. You have to lift the lock and the tender out together because they are both connected. Because if you try and lift the locomotive out without holding the tender by lifting them both out together then you might damage the tender coupling. So the packaging is now put to one side and we can now have a look at the model in detail. Before I do go into the detail I want to talk about the weight. This model is very heavy so there's a lot of weight in this model which is good because all that weight provides the traction for the model. So this model will not have any traction troubles with pulling trains. Because if this model doesn't have weight, it's going to have traction troubles and then it can't pull trains otherwise. So the weight is equally as important as the detail and the running performance. Moving on to the detail now. So first of all we have buffers that are not sprung. But I don't really care about that to be honest because with sprung buffers you're only going to really be handling the buffers when you're holding the model. And to be honest, I only ever mess about with the buff buffers for the sake of review purposes. I never mess about with the spun buffers afterwards. <laughs> so I don't have much care for spun buffers and I'd... I'm not fussed if a model doesn't have spun buffers. It would have been nice if they were made of metal. They are made of plastic but... There we go. It's only a small thing. At least the model has got some buffers. But one thing I do want to show you about these plastic buffers is the detail behind the buffers. Just look at that. It's that little part I'm zooming in right now. Excuse the cocktail stick coming in, but just look at the detail there. Out of focus. Because if you look behind these oval buffers, you actually do see rivet detail behind them. Almost as if the oval buffer heads have been riveted onto buffers with the round heads and that has been replicated here as you can see and that is some very nice bit of detail because usually when you look at behind the metal oval buffers they don't have that detail but with these plastic buffers they do and that's a nice feature to have, so I'm not fussed now that these buffers are plastic because otherwise we wouldn't have had that bit of detail there behind the buffers. Moving on to the buffer beam, we've got lots of rivets as you can see and the little coupling hook to fit a chain link coupling or screw link coupling on there if you wish and the little holes for the details to simply slot into. We've got lamp irons on the running board as you can see You've got what are called the neck holders and some nice rivet detail there on the front. Very nice to have that. Moving on to the smoke box door, we've got some very nice detail. We've got a lamp iron, a separately fitted handrail, the locomotive's running number, 71,000, crisply printed on the smoke box door number plate. We've got smoke box door darts that are not separately fitted, they are moulded, however, it's been quite cleverly done because you have to look really close at the smoke box doors darts to tell that they are moulded on and they are painted as well which is a nice touch to have we've also got a crisply printed shed code there which this one is 5A which was the shed code for Crew North we've got a very nice double chimney there you could fit a smoke generator unit in if you wanted but I'm not going to bother but very nicely done chimney that as well. There's rivets on the smoke box as you can see as well as some very nice pipe work there. Some nice rivet detail on the smoke deflectors as well as the crisply printed nameplates. 
builder's plate and a overhead warning sign crisply printed on as well and we have separately fitted handrails as you can see and they look very nice as well we've got some guard irons on the front of the bogey there and there's the NEM socket to fit that coupling in if you want to it's up to you there's some very nice detail on the bogey frames as well there's some very nice lining and rivet detail on the cylinders as well as the cylinder heads which have been painted which is very nice we've also got the link motion on the valve gear I mean just look at that I mean this is the Caprotti valve gear as well and that just looks stunning it's bang on as well it's accurate as well to the real thing and I can't wait to see all that moving like you do on the real thing and of course you've got the speedometer as well moving on to the rear pony truck now I mean just look at all that pipe work detail there it's moulded but it's very cleverly done I have to say and it's pretty impressive as well we've also got an axle box and springs on the pony truck as well and the axle boxes have been painted which is very nice we've got separately fitted handrails going down alongside the boiler as well as some separately fitted pipe work as you can see just above it there's also some pipe work that runs alongside of the boiler there and where the firebox is just there at the front and that just looks fantastic you've also got a very nice crisp printed warning sign there as well you've also got the steam pipes as well and painted which look nice the boiler bands are fantastic to look at very nicely crispy done they are and they look nice you've got a very nice dome with some rivet detail on and the safety valves you've got glazing in the cab windows and rivets on the front of the cab there as you can see we've got rivets on the running plate rivets on the cab sides and crispy printed lining and the locomotive's ruin number crispy printed on the sides there separately fitted handrails on the back of the cab there lots of rivets on top of the cab there as well as moulded cab roof vents that are moulded to look open but you've got this wire mesh grill of some sort over that and that's actually been separately fitted and that looks absolutely stunning there's glazing in the windows on the cab there on the back as for the cab interior it's not painted but it is there it's just not been painted but you know that's not really a problem because you can paint it yourself I'm not gonna bother but you can do it if you want moving on to the tender now which there are lots of rivets on the tender as you can see we've got handrails separately fitted as well on the tender which look nice detail on the face plate of the tender all those storage cabinets there and coal in the chute we've got the footsteps on the tender already fitted of course some nice rivet detail on the frames of the tender as well as the axle boxes and springs and the axle boxes have been painted superb crisp lining on the sides of the tender and a crisply printed BR light crest on both sides there is a coal load in the tender it's not removable it's molded but you can always cover this load up with some real coal we've also got what looks like air tanks on the back of the tender there and the water filler cap which does not open and we shouldn't expect it to and it might not be easy for that to open anyway but it's there and it still looks nice it's a nice little bit of detail to have on the back of the tender there's a lot of detail separately fitted ladders and handrails which I thought these were separately fitted 
they're not they are molded but again you have to look really close at them to tell that they are molded and I did make a slight mistake with this hand roll here because I thought that was separately fitted as well but it's not it is molded but it's been done very cleverly though because you do have to look really close to tell that those hand rolls on the tender are molded we've got crisp printed warning signs some nice rivet detail and lamp irons as well as that little plate that tells you how many gallons the tender can hold we've got a slim tension lock coupling an M1 as well already fitted in the tender rivets on the buffer beam as well as a little coupling hook and like on the locomotive we've got plastic not sprung buffers on the tender now the livery application on this model is superb very nice even coat of paint with no errors in the paint and the correct shade of green as well which looks fantastic very nice livery the the R Brunswick green is moving on to the other side of the loco which does have a couple of detail differences from the other side on this side we haven't got the pipe work that runs on top of the separately fitted handrail this is the side that has the whistle fitted a very nice whistle as well and there is some pipe work on the smoke box but not as much as there was on the other side apart from those things though the rest of the detail is the same moving on to the running performance now and you can see straight out of the box she's a smooth runner there's no stuttering movement motors burning out or any otherwise it's a smooth run which is how these models should run when they come straight out of the box Moving on to the loaded test run. You can see here that Duke of Gloucester is managing this rack of marine coaches with these. And there are six coaches on here. This is not the 4A because there's still one more maroon coach, but that coach is out of action at the moment because it needs new wheels. Which you can manage this rack easily without trouble, so I'm pretty sure she could manage the 4A easily too.
so overall then, the Duke of Gloucester from Hornby is a faultless model. We'll overgloss that thing with the name plates because manufacturing problems could have meant that the name plates were as they are supplied with the model. This model does have a lot of stunning detail. It's a smooth runner, and just like the real thing, it's a powerful model too. You can see it here going like a bomb. Absolutely stunning. So overall, I'm going to rate the Hornby Duke of Gloucester Special Edition model. You know what? I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Why not? Like I said before, it's an absolutely flawless and faultless model. This has been Class 47 Peter, reviewing the stunning and gorgeous Hornby Special Edition Duke of Gloucester, and I'll see you again soon for the next review. I know what's going to be in the next review, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. But until then, subscribe to the channel. I still want to hit that 2,000 subscriber mark fairly soon. Check out my other content. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again soon. But until then, ta -ra.